Welcome back to Placemaking the Solar Punk. Um, with a slight delay, I give a big welcome to our speakers for this session, Lu Yen and Xavi. Um, Grassroot Movements Transforming Politics is the title of our conversation now. Um, last year has been a year full of movements, but there's also a lot of experience from um, movements before. And um, I would I look very much forward to hear this juicy conversation, but um, how about you guys have a, just a quick introduction of who you are? And then uh, I would like, I'd like to ask Xavi to give a short presentation. Uh, Lu Yen, you wanna start? Yeah. Hi, Ravi, it's nice to meet you. Um, so my name is Lu Yen and I'm based in Potsdam, which is close to Berlin. And I'm a free candidate for the next federal elections, um, which are happening next year in September. So um, I'm running without a party. Uh, my background is in Extinction Rebellion and Greenpeace. So, but yeah, I think uh, due to my year in the climate movement, um, I'm really inspired to use um, this energy and bring it into the next elections. Um, the stakes are really high in Germany. I mean, like everywhere, um, if we don't uh, switch towards 1.5 degree limit in the next uh, legislative period, um, the ship has sailed. So uh, it is my main mission to uh, bring this objective into federal politics um, because so far what we've seen in Germany is that uh, all our big parties, they are not committing to hard objectives enough, uh, which are sufficient. Um, everyone is talking about climate neutrality, neutrality in 2050, but that's not enough, as we all know. So um, as a free candidate, um, I can... Uh, I want to build um, new coalitions uh, in this electoral area, which um, has roughly 200,000 people. Um, I need 50,000 votes uh, to win the direct mandate. And so that's a, like a quantitative challenge. Um, but my slogan, uh, you can see uh, left no, on the right side of me, is um, called Einfach machen. Um, it means more or less just do it or make it easy, uh, like it's a word play um, or a double meaning. Uh, it means that I would like to offer people easy ways to engage with the classical politics, um, especially people who are kind of turned off or disappointed by regular party politics, uh, who find it too hierarchical and too patriarchal and so on. Um, and the machen, the doing, um, I think is really important. And I learned this uh, during Extinction Rebellion. I think there are so many solutions and great initiatives and grassroots uh, energy there. Um, we just have to make it bigger and like scale it up and, and bring more energy to it. And we don't have to reinvent the wheel. So the assumption is everything is there. Uh, we need to find out where are the resources in the community bring it together and like create this movement during the next year and yeah, to um, kind of make a statement, uh, but also win the election. <laughs> yeah, so uh, over to you, I would say, uh, except if you have questions um, you need for your background, maybe um, then let me know. Do for delay. I think Jacob got frozen. Yes, Javi, please just go ahead. And great uh, intro, Luyen. After this great and inspiring intro, I think mine will not be that great. <laughs> I'm Xavi Ferrer from Barcelona. I am I'm a founder member of Barcelona and Como, which is what I'm explaining afterwards. And my background is basically like um, grassroots movements, squads. My framework is the Zapatista movement, World Social Forum, and the globalization. And a couple of years ago, after being involved in the housing movement and evictions and all this stuff, uh, we decided in Barcelona, together with many other activists, to to jump into formal politics, into official. Uh, politics and run for office, and we won. <laughs> uh, 
and this is the crazy thing. <laughs> and and now I'm working. I was working a couple of years for for the organization that won the elections for Barcelona and Como. And now I'm working for for the city of Amsterdam, trying to do something similar and to creating some municipalist movement in Europe. That's super impressive. You have been an inspiration um, with Barcelona and Como. I also saw the documentary about Ada Colau and like the whole thing. It's like very inspiring. <laughs> so you want me to go on with the presentation that I prepared, Jacob, or how you want to do it? Yes, please. Okay. Um, I'm going to share the screen. I prepared some presentation to make it a bit more because I don't like, like, I'm, at least I'm very tired with this, uh, looking at faces all the time. <clears throat> so um, I did this. Um, I think like this. Okay. So um, first I'm going to explain the, the framework in which we, or the context in which we decided to, to do something this crazy, because for us, for people like me, who always hated, and still hate, if I'm honest, uh, parties and formal politics, um, it was a crazy leap to do. Uh, 2007, we already know this big economic crisis. 2009 in Spain, I think it was pretty different in Northern Europe, but in Southern Europe, it started to be pretty crazy, the social crisis. And with social crisis, I mean like crazy evictions and a lot of violence um, per perpetrated by, by the state, by the institution. Some people who killed themselves when they were about to, to be evicted. And we started to see something crazy, like mm, people who never got together or who never, mm, fight uh, started to do it. You know? I like this picture because it makes people from different colors, which is something that it was, it never happened before in Spain. Um, and in 2019, we had our, <clears throat> our Occupy, which was called 15M. And this was very important because this changed the, this opened the debate of whether what we had was an actual democracy. And we had this like big mobilizations and all this stuff. And this, this created a, a shift. And then in 2014, we said, hey, in the next year we have election, local elections in, in Barcelona and also national elections. So we thought maybe it's the right moment to think about something like this. We decided to launch this idea and and we won the elections. This, uh, we, we decided to run for office and we won, as I said earlier. Uh, just one picture to show this. And the night when, when we um, had the results. And I'm gonna explain a little bit um, very quickly because I think it's more uh, about a uh, conversation, but the process in which we created Barcelona and Comú. Um, we launched the idea of like, okay, we never thought about, um, mixing our energies. And when I say our, I mean people from the street, social movements, NGOs with political parties. Uh, but we thought that maybe that, that was the right time. So we launched this idea. Why don't we create something new that gathers all the energies? Uh, we said very explicitly, we don't want to create another lefty party that sums to the infinite list of uh, left is small parties, uh, so we want to gather all these all these energies, and and we said, do our our people interested in this? And we said, if we collect thirty thousand signatures, then this was the first step. If we collect thirty thousand signatures in three months, then we'll go on. Otherwise, we'll be back to our housing environmentalists, feminists, or whatever movements. And we did, we collected them. So we said, okay, let's go. Uh, we invited all kinds of parties to join, all kinds of um, organizations and also all kinds of people. This was the key factor. If we were able to engage people who were never in politics. So what we did the first, when, once we decided to go on, was to, to create this code of ethics, which 
maybe in Germany or in other places not that important, but in Spain there was there is still is a lot of corruption and this all these things. So it was very important to say, okay, the way we are doing politics is not only about the ideas or the goals, but the way we are doing this is going to be different. Our agendas are going to be public. We are going to have a maximum wage. So there's some sort of things that we are going to do very differently so that we are not working for the big lobbies, big corporations, or the big powers, but we are working in a very open source way. With in the hackers movement, maybe it's a very common thing, but uh, definitely in, the, in party politics, no at all. So this was the first thing that we did. The second thing was a participatory program. Uh, so we basically um, created an online platform where everyone was able to, um, you know, to, to promote, to, pro, to, I don't find the word, sorry, to propose uh, an idea, something to do in the city, could be something, a big idea or something very specific in your neighborhood or whatever, and we did, also some physical meetings because there's people who are not very used to work on online and we put all that information together in this online platform and then we were like putting together different ideas like adding and there, there was it's, it's a long process there's no time now to, to, to explain this once we had the the program <clears throat> so the what after the, the how, then we have the, the what. And then it's like, okay, how are we gonna do this? Like technically, no, logistically, we need money, we need some people working on this. So we were like also talking, like we don't want money for um, big organizations, we're gonna make all public all our numbers and blah, blah. And, and this is what we did, we did next. Uh, oh, sorry, yeah. And, and then what, what we did the last was the, so I had a problem. Can you see properly the, uh, yeah. Yes, we can see. Yes. Oh, okay, because I had something. Um, and the last thing, and we did it in this order because we thought it was, if we would have started thinking who would run it, because um, then that would be very difficult. We just started with how we're gonna do it and what we're gonna do it and then who, who is not the most important thing and always creates some tensions because there's ego, there's people who really like to be in some concrete positions. So this is the last thing we did. And, and yeah, so then we started the campaign and it was very <laughs> good because we won. I compiled here some ideas of what I think were like key factors of, of the success, but it's too long. Um, maybe we can go through this later in the conversation, but I would like to focus on three points that defines what municipalism, the approach, because as I said earlier, we had national elections and local elections, and we had a long debate. For three months, we were debating what to do, and we decided finally to, to run for local elections, Based on, based to be honest, also in logistics and practical <laughs> reasons, but um, also thinking that um, the state level is much more difficult to get in. There's the big powers are more powerful there, and it's much easier to gather people and to understand each other and to talk about concrete problems locally. So we we embraced this uh, municipalist strategy, which we summarized in three points. Local focus, so we are working locally with people, with the neighborhoods, which allows much more normal people to get uh, involved. Then the idea of confluence, which is pretty critical, at least in, in Spain it was. We, wouldn't, we wanted to put together parties, NGOs, social movements, artists, um, scholars, and people from the academy. So pe people who are usually don't like each other or sometimes hate each other. Like, let's put the focus on the things. 
that we want to do and let's let ourselves um, yeah, know each other and collaborate with each other. And then the third point, which is very important, is about the network, because this idea of local um, can be interpreted in a very nationalist way. Like, it's about us, and it's definitely not about us. We are trying to solve global problems. We need the network. When we did this in Barcelona, Madrid, Coruña, Valencia, many other cities in Spain did something similar and some of them also won the elections, but much more than in Spain. This, the, we are talking about um, solving problems that are like historical, patriarchy, exploitation, uh, growth, all these things that are global. So when we focus on the local, it's not because we forget this, but because the way we create this big power that we need to change these things, is focused on the local, but we keep the, the global approach. And then very quickly, I wanna talk about two projects that we are working on. One of them is the European Municipalist Network. It, it, it's, it's a project, actually the name, we, we are not a network or we are creating this network now. And it, 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 there's four activities that we are doing. We are mapping, local initiatives. We are, there's a group of feminization of politics, thinking how to feminize the way we treat each other, the way we think, the way we collaborate, the way, the way we do politics. One, another um, activity is dissemination. So communication, but also writing in general about, uh, we are working with, with people from the academy, people from uh, journalists and others. And then the municipal school, which this, this event, this talk could be included in this. Like we want to spread, we want to, to share our experiences no? from different municipalist organizations in Europe. So this one project and this going on, everyone is invited, is a totally open project. And then the other one is a forum that we are organizing in May next year. And we, we take a little bit the, the soul of the World Social Forum, maybe some of you know from about it. Um, but we want to do this in a decentralized way. So we want to take most likely April and May, two months, for as many cities, town, and villages in Europe to organize a two, three days conference for thinking how is the city or the village or the town of the future that we want. So which, which is the transition that, that we need to start to walk through and which is the, the vision that we have of, the, of this future. And we want to do it as, I, you can see here like without owner, you know, in a very open source way. We want to, you know, frame it, of course, with the COVID thing, with the environmentalist movements that rise up in the last years and, and pretty focus on this idea of transition, no? different transitions because it's towards sustainability, towards the decolonizing, towards feminization and towards the digitalization and maybe some others. But, and one important thing, and I think I can finish with this, is the way we want to work. The, we want to do politics in a different way. So it's not about your personal ego, but also your organizational ego, because sometimes like, ah, I want the brand of my, or the logo of my organization to be in the center. But okay, let's put this away and let's really sum forces. So, yeah, everyone is invited to contact us and to, to organize an event in their municipality to do this. We'll also use the CD, which is an online platform in which each of the groups will use it for organizing their own event, but also will use it to federate the results of the different events, the different local forums. There's much more to explain, but I don't want to make it longer. This is a bit of a joke, <laughs> of course, 
but but since the in in Germany in Leipzig this year, and you Lu Lu is your name or Lu Yen I don't know yeah. Lu Yen, uh, you are thinking about this and organizing this for Potsdam. I was making this joke, but in general, of course, I'm doing this because Jakob contacted me, and I I think this is what we have to do: spread and collaborate and everything. I'm a very an internationalist. But I'm also doing this, collaborating with this, because, because we need you. And when I say you, now I was focusing a bit in Northern Europe. I think in Southern Europe, there are many things happening, also because of the crisis is more obvious. But the centrality and the energy that you have, the, the power, let's use the right word, that you have, if we if we would have in Leipzig, Potsdam, Berlin, or Munich, or Amsterdam, or one of the big important cities in Northern Europe, if we would have a mayor, as we have in Barcelona, that said two weeks ago, please, citizens of Barcelona, don't buy in Amazon. It's killing our street, uh, our shopkeepers. Is ki ki killing our economy and our city. If this would be said by the mayor of Berlin, this would be like, you know, <laughs> the mayor of Berlin has the telephone of the mayor of New York, Beijing, or whoever, whatever. No? So yeah, it's also an invitation for you all to, to do this. Yeah, and maybe I think I did it a bit longer, sorry. Amazing storytelling, uh, Xavi. And um, Lu Yen, please, any questions? This is your, uh, your time, yeah. So uh, I want to pick up your initiative, Javi, and uh, maybe we can talk about, you know, just play through how would it look like a local transition forum in Potsdam? Um, yeah, so I think one big challenge which you always have is like, okay, you need a digital infrastructure, um, how to get people on there, what kind of infrastructure is there, how can people, you know, what, what do you give them, what, what is existing, what kind of templates or guidelines or other things, resources do you provide, and what needs to come from the local? We are doing this in, um, for some people, this would be a weakness. For me, this is a strength in an extremely open way. So we, are, we, we still don't have a governance for this project. Mm -hmm. You know, the more people join, the more, you know, okay, let's take decisions together. And it, it's, the, it's the same with, the, with this idea of the template of how uh, a local forum could look like. We are working on this. It's an open document. Uh, we can share this with, with you or whoever would be interested. Um, so the idea what we want is to, to, we are actually asking people what they need locally. We are in some cities that we know more people, we are trying to put people together, like people. What we think is that the main, and that's why I explained at the beginning the context in which we decided to do this in Barcelona, because without the, um, I don't find the word, without the broth, you can't do that, no? You, you, need, you need a strong uh, social civil society. If you don't have this, and this is where everything has to be based on. So we are inviting people. I, I'm making now this, this example with, with Budapest, because we had this call a couple of days ago. The, all the people that we know from Budapest, from different movements, we made a call with all of them. I say, hey, do you want all together without any fight, without anything? We don't have to agree on on everything, but we have we share the main idea. So let's organize something in which we can debate this and we can bring these debates more mainstream. So, and what do you need? And we are now working with the CDM, trying to set this platform uh, because this is something that people said that they would need. But 
in general, for example, now we are also thinking about communication. It, we are thinking that each local group would have their own communication and their freedom to, to set the program in the way they would like, but also it would be interesting to have a common communication with a common name so that it's clear that we are part of the of something uh, together. Oh, uh, someone said, Uge says three minutes. So, um, yeah, I don't know whether I answered the, your question. Um, what we ask in one sentence would be openness, generosity, an actual will to do something that is useful for the movement in a broad way. Yeah. And what we offer is, okay, we are nine people in Amsterdam working on this. We have a strong network, strong, big network at least of people here and there. And we are inviting all of them, all kind of, I don't know, think tanks, um, we are talking with Extinction Rebellion UK, for example. These are one of the guys who will be involved, definitely. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, maybe then it makes sense if we talk after this call because this will be <laughs> over in a couple of minutes. Um, maybe just want to give you some feedback. Uh, about, uh, yeah, or maybe uh, just the last question on Barcelona and Comú, actually. Um, you said uh, you had a platform there uh, to do the participatory program. What kind of platform was that? I, I don't remember. I can, but I can share, I can, I can search that information because the link, the, the website must be still there, mm -hmm. but I can also, uh, ask and put you maybe in touch with the right people or whatever. I will I will do that, no problem. Yeah, okay, thank you. And um, uh, just about the timelines, when you were presenting, um, like, can you remember from when to, like, before you started the campaign, how much time went into the uh, preparation process of, um, from signatures to list? From signatures to list, um, since we got the signatures until the list was something like eight, nine months. Mm -hmm. Okay. Something like this. Yeah, because right now we are nine months uh, away from the elections. So we need to move really, really fast now. Um, yeah, and I think uh, maybe a difference to Barcelona is. Um, that I'm running for the federal parliament, um, but it's kind of a mixture. Like you want the people from one electoral area to vote for one direct candidate and then bring it into the federal government. So there is this link between national politics and local politics, I think. Like I need to break down the global problems into local tangible projects and then uh, identify where is the national challenge here. Um, so like I can, you know, be a transmitter between the worlds. Yeah. But um, yeah, these talks always go by too fast. <laughs> I feel we've barely scratched the surface, uh, but it was nice to meet you. And uh, yeah, we can pick it up later on. Sure.